नमस्कार रिसेंटली द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज डिसाइडेड टू री इंट्रोड्यूस द लॉस्ट प्राइड ऑफ इंडिया द बिग कैट चीता प्लीज हैव अ लुक एट दिस वीडियो एंड यू कैन सी हाउ द चीता इज रनिंग सो फास्ट टेकिंग द स्प्री इट कैन रन वन ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर पर आर विद इन अ सेकेंड इट कैन इंक्रीज इट स्पीड सो हियर वी विल नो the entire reintroduction of cheetah project in india uh, how is going to be make up what is the history behind that and what will be the possible impact on us on human beings on ecosystem what are the cost involved into this project and so and so forth let's have a look that why reintroduction of african cheetah in india is news Supreme Court of India has given a green signal in July 2021 to reintroduce African cheetahs mind it African cheetahs from Namibia Namibia is a country in Africa into the Indian habitat on an experimental basis in this project the five male and three female cheetahs will be donated by the EWT of South America EWT is endangered wildlife trust of South Africa actual relocation will take place in India in this 2021 October and November and the entire project will be dealt by the National Tiger Conservation Authority which in short is known as NTCA these all bodies like national tiger conservation authority namibia location and then the endangered wildlife trust you must be knowing about all those locations because it is going to be important various kind of permutation and combination of questions come can come in various competition examination related to that now move ahead before entering into the exact issue we must be knowing about the cheetahs their physiology their behavior and their habitat and all these things so in coming slides we will be discussing about this various factual information that you must know as a aspirant of various examinations so there are few fact which has been collected from various scientific journals and authenticated data regarding cheetah average age span for cheetah is 10 to 12 years both for male and females now you think one thing suppose you are capturing a male cheetah tell me will it live longer in captivation or in wild think for a while i'll answer it later on adult cheetah weight is average 75 to 125 pounds measures from head to hand is 40 to 60 inches if you add the tail into it 24 to 32 inches will be added an overall length of the cheetah is up to 7.5 feet and an average cheetah stand 28 to 36 inches tall at the shoulder so this is a general physiology of the cheetah male cheetah are slightly bigger than the female having large heads and larger nostril so this is a basis for distinguish between a male cheetah and a female cheetah so usually female cheetahs are taller having a large nostril and a large head so in that way you can distinguish between a male and a female cheetah cheetah's life cycle has a three phases same as we human beings are so first phase is known as the cub which is birth to 18 months second is adolescence which is 18 to 24 months and the adult life is start from 24 months onward on an average gestation period which is known as the pregnancy period for the cheetahs are 93 days and one more thing that the average life span of cheetah is nearly 10 to 12 years the uh, habitat is basically semi arid region it is mainly found and well suited to the semi arid region across the world mainly in africa west asia and central asia so these are the location worldwide for the cheetah habitations it specializes for 
open chest predation and mainly chased for antelope and deer these are the facts you must be knowing and must keep in your mind while you are reading about the cheetah's reintroduction this one fact that it remains in a semi arid region and open chase predation it means that cheetah need a large and a vast flat of land be it a desert or a savanna or a grassland to chase its predator and due to that mainly a land acquisition is a problem in the cheetah's reintroduction anywhere so because it's their natural habit they cannot sleep in a cube they cannot stay in a house they need a larger area and larger natural biome and an environment cheetah individuals are highly dispersed highly dispersed mean their territories are mainly large in one territory usually there are one and a two male cheetahs and few female cheetahs usually they did not lived in a crowd and that is because they want a large area to follow their herbivores and the predators the home ranges can be huge it is estimated that in namibia farland it is nearly 1651 square kilometer area and in algerian sahara it is supposed to be nearly 1500 to 1600 square kilometer area so now you can imagine how vast land predators they are this is interesting to know actually that it rarely molests domesticated animal and has not known to attack man isn't it interesting we usually thought that tiger animal cheetahs they used to eat up human beings okay and they willingly enter into the human settlement to kill us but interestingly it is not true usually they avoid us they are not known to no scientific papers reveal this fact that they love to enter into human settlement to kill humans or to attack humans cheetah is the world's fastest land animal this you must be knowing uniquely adapted for speed it is capable of reaching speed greater than 110 kilometers per hour in just over 3 seconds so you can imagine that how fast they can change their speed and how rapidly they can chase their predator they can cut hold of it so where exactly they reside what is their geographical distribution in india in the ancient time cheetahs were present it was there and it is found across the semi desert area that means the area nearby gujarat rajasthan punjab haryana along with odisha it means the entire central india almost the entire part of the central india that was a habitat for the cheetahs and in the andhra pradesh that now includes telangana and karnataka also which is a part of the peninsula india so in central india and in peninsula india that was a reason where the cheetahs can live in india and it was an historically habitat for them another space that in africa subspecies they occur mainly in the africa that's in namibia botswana east africa kenya and tanzania the asian subspecies is mainly found in iran iran in across entire area of iran but the number of this iranian species which is known as an asiatic species of cheetah is very less in number it is estimated that it is only 100 in numbers but remember that india is not reintroducing the iranian cheetah it is reintroducing from africa keep that in mind move on next this is the distribution of the cheetah in the globe this is africa this entire continent is africa in africa it is found in algeria and niger kenya and tanzania in the central part of africa and in the southern part of africa namibia and botswana this is the location of namibia remember from here we are importing cheetah into india reintroduction cheetah in india this is iran and this map has been enlarged here this iran 
in Iran, this red light and this blue patches, these are the reserves for the cheetah in Iran. And this grayish color, these are the distribution of cheetah, which are not under conservation. So this is a global distribution and geographical map location of the cheetah. Hopefully this will help you in memorizing the location globally for cheetah. Moving next to the topic, its classification. Generally, it is believed among the biologists that the heterogeneity in cheetahs are very less. They are homogeneous groups. Mainly they have been divided into two groups. One group is known as the African group which is the scientific name is Essenonyx jubatus jubatus and the second one is the Asiatic cheetah which is Essenonyx jubatus veneticus. So jubatus jubatus used for African remember that and in Asiatic the veneticus is a difference. Maybe in examination, they cannot directly ask about cheetah. They can give you the scientific names. And in scientific name also, since we are uh, reintroducing the African cheetahs, they can name African or to make you confused, they can name the Asiatic scientific cheetahs. So remember this scientific name for the purpose of clear identification for cheetah, which we are introducing, reintroducing indeed in India. This is a typical example of an African cheetah and this is a typical example of an Asiatic cheetah. If you observe the total length of the African cheetah is higher than the total length of the Asiatic cheetah. This simply means that the African cheetahs are taller in comparison to the Asiatic cheetah then the asiatic cheetah are generally have more fur they are more furry in comparison to the african cheetahs another factor eyes look at the eyes it's red in color the asiatic cheetahs have generally red eyes whereas the african cheetahs has dark brown to black eyes these are some of the differentiation between the Asiatic cheetah and the African cheetah. Another thing is the neck. Usually, the neck of the African cheetah is less in comparison to the Asiatic cheetah. So, you just for your knowledge keep in mind that these are the physiological differences among the two varieties of cheetah. These are some added facts you must know about cheetahs that the African cheetahs in the IUCN list are under vulnerable condition, vulnerable list in red list. Distribution is they are found in large number. The number is approx 6500 to 700 African cheetahs. They are bigger in size compared to Asiatic cheetahs. Asiatic cheetah, since we are reintroducing this cheetah, so this information can be asked in various permutation combinations, so you must have knowledge about it. IUCN status, this is critically endangered. Mind it, the African cheetahs are endangered, whereas Asiatic cheetahs are critically endangered. Their number are very less, 40 to 50 percent only in Iran right now. Another thing is that, that Characteristics, they are smaller, having more fur and uh, longer neck. So, the, in appearance, they are smaller, they are lighter and brighter in yellow color. So, these are the physical identification and extinction in India. You must keep this information in mind. Thus, this is the only big cat species which has been lost due to hunting in India, not due to climate change, not due to habitat loss, not due to any other factor. Hunting was the prime cause for the extinction of cheetah from India. In 1947, Maharaja Ramanuj Pratap Singh of Devgar, which right now lies in the Chhattisgarh state of India, killed nearly 1150 tigers just for pleasure since at that time hunting was a pleasure game for the princely state kings. 
and reportedly he killed the last non asiatic cheetah in india but as per the official declaration by the government of india and the ministry of forest environmental and science development and forestry they declare that 1952 is the official date for the extinction of asiatic cheetahs from india so for your confusion maybe this kind of a question can ask so you will be mentioning only the reports which is noted by the government of india which is 1952 is the year so think once that since 1952 1947 cheetah is not found in india so why it is that in 1920 1921 we are thinking to reintroduce it is it like the earlier government did not tried it earlier people did not bother about our life uh, biological diversity and the ecosystem diversity in cheetah they why don't they think of bringing it back to our country do you know it why it's not that they don't want in 1955 state wildlife board of andhra pradesh was the first state to raise the concern that they should reintroduce cheetah in india then again in 1960s department of environment and formerly wrote a letter to the iranian government to reintroduce the cheetah but by that time the iranian government in nearly 2006 and 9 declined and denied the cheetah's reintroduction and giving it to india on a ground that they have only less number of cheetah so the plan gets stalled by that then again in the 1980s the reintroduction of the cheetah was rekindled by the zafar fateh ali Jafar Fotewali was that time an environmentalist as well as the minister who wrote to Indira Gandhi to reintroduce and think about it and reinitiate it but during that time the government did not try to do it and the plan again goes into the back channel then again the NTCA the National Tiger Conservation Authority of India filed a plea in 2010 to request permission from the supreme court of india to reintroduce cheetahs in india again it goes on the battle goes on and that time the supreme court of india declined the plea by the ntca citing the cause that animals are the foreign species and can cause ecological imbalance in india mind it this was the reason on which the supreme court denied in 2009 2010 the plea of the ntca then again in february 2019 ntca told the apex court of india which is the supreme court to reintroduce cheetah in nora dehi wildlife sanctuary nora dehi wildlife sanctuary is in also madhya pradesh but again this sanctuary was not selected by the environmentalist and the person involved and it was rejected and later on in july 2021 the finally supreme court of india permission the ntca to reintroduce the cheetah in kuno palpur sanctuary in madhya pradesh on an experimental basis so this is the history behind the cheetah reintroduction in india in short if you wanted to know it elaborately we will be providing you the write up on it now the fact comes in our mind and you think that what was the main reason and what was the other factor that lets the cheetah distinct from this country vanish completely from the country so mainly hunting was undoubtedly one of the cause but there are other factors also so let's discuss one by one those factors about the extinction of cheetahs from india number one cause is that the cheetahs are naturally rare species and their adaptability is low in comparison to the leopard and bengal tiger and they need a large home range for their adaptation so this is one of the cause due to that in 90s 80s or 1600 1700 the cheetahs number gradually declined in india another factor is mughal emperors usually used cheetah 
as a coursing to hunt the antelopes during medieval period even akbar you, what they do is they tamed the cubs from the wild they trained it and there was manpower who looked after the cheetah and then they course with the cheetah for the antelopes and deer during that time because it was considered as a pride pride to the princely state so the during that time the maximum number of cheetahs were hunted this is one cause the other cause is level of genetic heterogeneity is low in cheetah and that is why in the evolutionary history the infant mortality rate is high in cubs fecundity in the female cheetahs are high that is why born number of cubs are nearly 2 to 3 or 4 and hardly they survive at the early childhood birth it has been reported by the many scientists that from the birth 10 months within the 10 months attack from the hyena and the other big animals like lion and carnivores they have been died so 50% population of cheetahs died within the 10 months from their birth okay now again during british time britishers has not only devastated us on the ground of money cultural dominance and they have destroyed even our species and endangered species as well they have done a devastating negative impact to our culture to our people to the wildlife to the animal across the continent during british time hunting for cheetah was simply done for a trophy and it was considered as a chase fun game if you course a cheetah if you kill a cheetah you'll get a trophy just for fun think about it how cruel one can be you are just killing an animal for fun for trophy they did it to our country another thing that during 19th century onward when the population explosion happened in india the demand for land the grazing demand for the extra livestock it increases a pressure on the grasslands on the desert area on the margin area on the buffer zones and we converted those natural habitat loss for cheetah for our own use for overgrazing for agriculture and settlement building expansion of land for our construction purposes so these are the major causes for the extinction of cheetah from india now if you summarize it the habitat loss is one due to population pressure by the britishers for a trophy for future the uh, biological heterogeneity was one of the inherent cause of their low birth rate higher mortality rate higher fecundity rate then uh, by the mughals for the coursing use and uh, hunting was the cause so and their less adaptability need for a higher range of the habitat is also a cause for their extinction from india now you think for a while that okay since last 50 60 years there is no cheetah in the country and there is no harm around as well so why the hell we are again thinking to reintroduce it what is the importance of it there are some importance let's have a look cheetah is an another iconic species reinforce the public idea of conservation and it is a triumph for the wildlife management in india if we are able to plan it properly and reintroduce the cheetah then this will be a worldwide triumph for india as a nation that we have been successful in reintroducing cheetah which has been extended since 50 60 years so it's a matter of a national pride not only that return of the cheetah was obvious motivated by the national ethos seen as the following quotes the return of the cheetah would make india the only country in the world to host six of the world's eight large cats and the only one to have all the large cats of asia the statement has been given by mk ranjit singh who was the head of the wti in india another impact is that cheetah was propounded to be useful for facsive species conservation of grassland 
In India, since the historical time, due to the forest management and timber management, the grassland management has been neglected throughout the history. But cheetah is a very important animal for the grassland management. So if we are able to reintroduce cheetah into the grasslands of India, then we can transform the grassland. We can uh, renovate the grassland, we can redesign the grasslands and grasslands are important part of our ecosystem. So it has an ecological benefit to our community. Another thing is cheetah is a top predator. In that way, it controls the herbivore species throughout the cascade effect and thus leading to the healthier and more diverse ecosystem. For the ecosystem diversity, it is required. And most important fact now that India now has the economic ability as well as the willpower to restore its natural lost heritage. It's a part of our heritage for ethical as well as for ecological reasons. So that is why the government is trying hard to reintroduce cheetah in India once again. So now we understand that the, it is very important for India to reintroduce cheetah in its rewilded. So, hope you understand that how it is important for India now. The most important and fascinating thing is that we are capable now. And once we are capable, we must be doing it. Like what is stopping us while doing, right? So, everything was said that fine it is useful for our environment it is useful for the country's pride everything was done uh, we have a plan also we have set up a committee uh, with the permission of the cji of india and uh, we have constituted a three-member committee heading by the director and dig of wwi wit and then the ntca but and they have sending the people from uh, for the poop Kuno Palpu region to have a survey and the ground reports from there, sending a delegation to the Namibia to study in integrated regarding the habitat, their habits uh, of the cheetah so that the further problem, their adaptation problem, related issues can be solved beforehand. But again, there are immense dividend and division between the biologist, naturalogist, environmentalist, as well as the bureaucrats and intellectuals included, that reintroduction of cheetah has a many issues that may harm the human population and also harm the ecology. Now we will be segmenting this sector into two sectors. One is ecological issue and the second is socio-economic issues. So now discuss the first factor in the ecological issues. Number one is need for vast area. Since it was told already that the cheetah used to have a vast land area for the predator to chase, not only that, in a vast area, there should be immense prey on that they can predate on. But the fact is in Kuno Palpu region and the century area, there are only jackals, hyenas, cheetal. This is a cheetal deer. Okay, so these are a population. Among them, only the cheetal population are large in number and others are less in number. So the naturalists are not sure that how long the cheetah can survive on this pre-density. So this method of calculating the pre-density as well as the vast area, like how much area, then the area, uh, how will you acquire the area, well will the people go and then in integrated the grassland ecosystem so far in India has not been studied vastly on a scientific level, not only in India, even in the world it has not been studied the uh, cumulative effect on the grasslands, how they regenerate, sometimes it is operated by the fire, sometimes it is operated by the floods, sometimes by the grazing lands. So in that hodgepodge scenario, people are very apprehensive regarding this project even you call this ambitious projects of reintroduction of cheetah many shout that it is a rewilding concept rewilding as a type of a western model for reintroduction of any wild animal into their previous location or a habitat 
so need for a vast area is an ecological concern that how you are going to manage that how you are going to monitor that what will be the scientific procedure into that then what will be the impact of that into the other flora and fauna on this area their population their density their natural habitat their basis so still in india this scientific information is not available one ecological concern and a major concern so second thing which is integrated with that is demand for high pre density i have already told that this kuno palpur region has a ample of chital deer population but suppose that the meat density and the meat requirement for the cheetah is high if it eated it for four or five year then how about the next time and next time if it is not getting the meat in the wild then what the cheetah will do it may encroach in the nearby area for the livestock which are domesticated by the local people like dogs cat other cattle sheep so this is one another concern the other concern is scientific method for selection of habitat development and their monitoring still in the wii and wti reports this is an official report by the government of india there is no clarification regarding the methods and even in the methods when the survey has gone the local people has not taken into consideration there has been not any survey on the ground regarding the vegetation cover regarding the meat habit of the other animals in those areas so these are the concern and even afterward looking at the failure system and the prior reports of the wildlife reintroduction in india like lion in 1994 which was a failed product and uh, which was unsuccessful because of the habitat loss and even the habitat that we have developed over there was not sufficient for lions so these are an another concern looking at the historical background of the reintroduction of any animal into india and another thing is human wildlife conflict that how we are going to manage and bureaucrats are very apprehensive towards it because in many other areas even in a movie there is a sherni movie which is uh, available on amazon prime you might have seen that how two cubs of tigers are roaming in a village area and how the people are trying to poach them the villagers thought that it, they are endangered by them the other way around the animal thought mm, that the humans are endangered to that out of the fear insecurity there were a regular conflict this kind of conflict is even common in the goru mara and then in assam also ganda reserve so people are rhino reserve forest area so we don't know exactly so that is why that still it is since the last 50 60 years we don't have this management area and a conflict zone with the people how we are going to deal with the human wildlife conflict for cheetah in india the proper management the proper guideline is missing so this these are the apprehensions another apprehension that is being made by the involved displacement of people this displacement of people is a major concern and major debatable issue in media in public forum and even on global scale in 1944 the kuno palpur reserve the century has already been selected for the lions lions reintroduction but what happened that nearly 76 villages comprising of nearly 5 to 6 thousand tribal population and this tribal population was mainly saharias tribe so you must be remembering this tribe name saharia tribes the the question may comes in permutation combination sometimes so if it is in your knowledge you are in a safer zone to tick the right answer indeed so since the saharia tribes are there these tribes are pastorals and hunters they have a already low economy and they have mainly based on the forest and the nearby grassland area so now the problem happens that if we reintroduce the cheetah into that wild in those area we need approximately 302000 square kilometer of land that involves nearly 167 villages 
displacement so where these villages will go if you allocate them to another land the quality of the land the time given frame on when they will get the things alternate livelihood issue their adaptability to a new place what they will do and since it is a tribal belt mind it since it is a tribal belt of saharia tribe kuno palpur century has been selected for the reintroduction because they thought that this tribe can easily be dislocated displaced from this area and in 1994 already nearly 5 to 6000 people have been displaced from this area from the fringe area for the purpose of reintroduction of line into that area but that was a failed product and till now the plight of the peoples are high in those area they did not get the proper compensation they did not get the ultimately livelihood and employment generations program and they did not get the good quality of land outside their place so and on the top of the emotional sentimental side of the people are misleading so and even in the narmada area narmada dam area so these all displacement issues in Ind india has been largely debated and it has been shown throughout the history that once the people have been displaced from a region the compensation is highly low so this is one of the major debatable issue that what over what human over the wild or the wild over the human this debate is going on second thing is financial cost involved in implementation implementation of this program involves nearly 120 crores rupees so people are debating that at time of corona and the other issues this finance can be managed to some other infrastructure development for people for healthcare for education for extra support things and from where this finance will come so this is one of the issue and ignorance of the local wisdom is added issues like the local people knows the best about their region but this planning and the research has not included this local people into the entire planning of the reintroduction this is mainly a top down approach in top down approach what people do they plan something from a place as an alien they don't reside in this area they plan it they theorize it and theoretically they say that these these, these are the steps these are the way it is going to be implemented and then they put the plan on paper and then they say that okay we are going to do that way but the it requires a bottom up approach bottom up approach means the inclusion of the local wisdom the local people if the government thinks on an cohesive program coexistence program okay in which they can see that okay the local people will be involved in the reintroduction the non timber based industry and then the mon in the monitoring process they will be involved the survey will be done on the behavioral of the other animals there and how these peoples and these tribes are involved and attached with the local and the plants and the flora and fauna over there so the sentimental things and the part will be there and in the management it is proven that the locals know the best they understand their ecosystem more than than outsider so ignorance of the local wisdom is the another socio economic issue which is concerning around the reintroduction plan of cheetah in india so in a conclusion base we can summarize the entire topic in the points that proposed cheetah reintroduction harks back to time in india indian history when particular animal is a symbol of pride our history and then a historical identity cheetah is the fastest land animal on the planet on the earth it is a good predator who mainly prey upon the antelopes it is the only animal in india which is extinct due to hunting and in november 2021 from africa namibia it will be reintroduced in india in kuno palpur sanctuary in madhya pradesh it was declared extinct in india in 1952 due to hunting by the indian kings another thing the reintroduction plan now must involve local wisdom and ecological cohesiveness so that 
this can harness the best result and conserving sustainable reintroduction of cheetah and in india and it can reinstate the pride that india has lost gone in past 40 50 years these are the list of references that has been used to make this presentation and all the facts has been tested verified with the scientific journals with the government data if you wanted to read more on this topic you can follow all those references thank you let's save our uh, endangered species let's save our pride before it's too late keep continuing your study with ensemble stay healthy respect our nature thank you namaskar to have more such discussions and analysis subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos